First of all, if I could introduce Alex Pickard. Alex uh, is the strategy and policy lead at Genomics Unit of NHS England. Uh, very kindly stepping in for Dame Sue Hill, who's been called to a ministerial meeting. So Alex, please uh, look forward to your talk. Thank you very much. Um, and yes, so just also to highlight the apologies from Sue that she's not been able to attend this meeting. Um, I'm going to put my Sue Hill hat on and do the, the best that I can to uh, to run you through where we are with implementation uh, of genomics in the NHS. Um, so if you could move on to the next slide, please. Um, so I'm going to be talking about uh, what we're doing in terms of implementation of genomic medicine in a clinical setting. Um, the genomics unit within NHS England and NHS Improvement is responsible for the commissioning of genomic testing services for the NHS in England. We work with many partners um, across the uh, genomics ecosystem, including uh, Genomics England, the Department of Health and Social Care, the Office for Life Sciences, Health Education England, and lots of others, uh, lots of other organisations to help um, with the implementation, but our responsibility is really the, the commissioning and funding of genomic testing and clinical genomic services for patients uh, in the NHS in England. Um, so the next slide, please. Just a very quick uh, slide to uh, set the context of, of where we are. So we have got a number of challenges for our healthcare system uh, in the NHS. Um, Firstly, around needing to deliver affordable healthcare so that there's value to, to, um, to taxpayers. Um, and this is particularly uh, an issue now as we look uh, to move towards the restoration and recovery uh, from the COVID pandemic. And therefore, all of the work that we do within all of our healthcare services need to ensure that we are delivering affordable healthcare. Uh, we have aging populations with increasing numbers of people living with long term conditions um, and an increasing rate of non communicable diseases. But we still have at the heart of all of our health service wanting to provide equity of access and the delivery of high quality care. The future directions of our healthcare system is particularly to move towards a focus on population health and um, prediction and pre prevention of disease and earlier diagnosis and really moving towards personalisation so that we are uh, looking at, uh, at medicines optimization and, and the limits of a one size fits all approach. And genomics is really central to this and how we're, how we're driving this forward. Next slide, please. So underpinning this specifically for genomics, and this may have already been mentioned, is the uh, Genome UK healthcare strategy that was published by the government um, uh, late last year. And it really sets out the ambition to create the most advanced genomic health system uh, in the world. Um, and it um, is underpinned by the latest scientific uh, advances. There are three main pillars uh, to the strategy. The first around diagnosis and personalised medicine, the second by uh, prevention, and the third around research. And all of that is underpinned by measures around engagement, dialogue with the public uh, and patients, and the healthcare workforce. Uh, specifically related to uh, the NHS in England, it does include a number of commitments uh, for us around, particularly around whole genome sequencing, um, and we will look to, to how we, uh, we work to implement that, but really this is about how we work together across the four UK nations to drive through uh, these priorities of the strategy. Next slide, please. So specifically for the NHS in England, we have developed our NHS long term plan, which has really set the strategic direction for the NHS for the next 10 years. And there is a particular focus on genomics and some key genomics commitments that we are responsible for delivering. The first of that is that we will sequence uh, 500,000 whole genomes by 23-24, and that's really looking at uh, targeting a number of um, rare and inherited disorder clinical indications and some cancer clinical indications, including uh, for paediatric cancers um, as well. Uh, we've also got um, commitments around extending access to molecular diagnostic genomic testing for uh, patients with cancer. Um, and we've got a big programme of work around uh, cancer genomic testing, um, improving the early detection of familial hypercholesterolemia, so inherited uh, uh, high cholesterol, to make sure that we are actually improving the, the testing there and raising it from a detection rate of 7% to 25%, as we know there's a huge unmet need in that area. 
and also particularly ensuring that we're driving the research agenda so that patients can benefit from research and discovery through genomics and making sure we're working to link and correlate genomic and clinical and patient data to help us identify uh, new treatments, diagnostic patterns, and to help us make informed decisions about care going forward. So there's a lot of political commitment, as we have noted uh, previously from, from day one, that really is underpinning our genomic medicine service. And if we move to the next slide, please. Although uh, the NHS in England has been doing uh, genomic testing for many, many years, um, we really have had a step change over the last couple of years, particularly um, in some of the advances around whole genome sequencing. And that really is uh, building on the foundations of the 100,000 Genomes Project, uh, delivered by Genomics England in partnership with the NHS and really what was um, uh, the key element to this project was the, uh, the link with the NHS, so the development of 13 NHS genomic medicine centres who supported the identification of participants for the project, the um, uh, gaining of the sample, the validation and reporting of the results in the laboratories, and then working to return the results to, uh, to clinicians, um, uh, to then return to participants. And really the aim of this was to uh, create the direction for implementing whole genome sequencing, support the transformation and build readiness in the system uh, to deliver whole genome sequencing as part of routine clinical care. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of the statistics and I'm assuming they will have been uh, covered uh, in previous slides, but there is still work to do um, in terms of the 100,000 Genomes Project. So firstly, ensuring that all participants receive uh, information about additional looked for findings. So as part of the um, recruitment to the project, all participants were offered um, to consent to receive um, additional looked for findings that are not related to their primary findings. And we're in the process of um, developing and putting in process to, uh, to return all of those. Um, looking to ensure that uh, participants continue to be involved in future developments and future research, um, looking at uh, the reconsenting of uh, participants who have now reached the age of 16. So there's still a lot of work going on uh, within and under the 100,000 Genomes Project uh, banner within the NHS um, uh, working with Genomics England as well. If we move to the next slide. So the uh, 100,000 Genomes Project really did set the foundations for a lot of work in the uh, NHS Genomic Medicine Centres uh, service. So we had over 5,000 NHS staff at the core of working with the uh, NHS Genomic Medicine Centres, and that really helped to, to drive through establishing uh, multidisciplinary teams for rare disease and cancer, particularly around the interpretation and validation of results, uh, and then bringing together uh, MDTs um, as well. It uh, created new national ways of working across organisational boundaries. So the genomic medicine centres, uh, there were only 13 across the country, which meant the NHS Trust had to come together to work in partnership across a larger geography and really helped to drive that um, equity of access to make sure that genomics wasn't just being focused in particular trusts, but was actually being uh, driven across whole geographies. It also brought together uh, NHS services, particularly in cancer and clinical genetics, but also other specialisms as well, um, such as cardiology and neurology, and really started to support the mainstreaming agenda of genomics that we, uh, we've been continuing. Um, there were the data sharing and the, the richness of the clinical data that was collected against the standard data sets is also really uh, helped and, and is supporting that re the research agenda. Um, it has helped drive clinical leadership and workforce developments again across the NHS uh, through all of that, uh, that staff change. It's helped embed um, key uh, pathways of care to support the mainstreaming of, of delivery of, of genomic medicine um, and started to uh, be integral to the alignment of the research and clinical care for patient benefits um, and particularly establishing new models of care around, for example, the fresh frozen cancer pathway, where previously that had not been in place. And importantly, this has really helped build the evidence for the introduction of whole genome sequencing as part of a routine uh, clinical service in the NHS in England. So if we move to the next slide, 
this is all underpinned the creation of the NHS Genomic Medicine Service. And the vision for the NHS GMS, uh, as we call it, is to provide a national genomic testing service that is consistent and equitable across uh, the NHS in England, where everybody is uh, operating to common national standards. So no matter where a patient is based uh, within the country, uh, they receive the, the same level of care and the same quality of care because everybody's working to st national standards and specifications. We have developed a single national genomic test directory, which very clearly outlines uh, all of the genomic testing for rare and inherited disorders and cancer that is um, commissioned by the NHS in England. Previously, there was always some confusion about who pays for what and where the testing is delivered. And really helping to clarify that means that we address some of those barriers to access to testing. Um, all patients are given the opportunity to participate in research and have that conversation as part of um, as part of their uh, clinical care so that we're really driving that um, that uh, integration between clinical and research and also working with Genomics England to build a national genomic knowledge base so that we are providing that real world data to inform the academic uh, and industry research and to support new uh, discoveries and also uh, to support clinical trial recruitment um, for, for patients. Uh, next slide, please. So all of this has been developed uh, within the uh, NHS Genomic Medicine Service infrastructure, which I'll talk through on this slide and then a, a couple of um, uh, slides coming up. But in terms of our, we have a, a clinical uh, genetic service, which is where we have our, our clinical teams who um, inform and have discussions uh, with patients. Uh, we've got um, uh, our seven genomic laboratory hubs where the, the genomic testing is formed. And the, the seven genomic laboratory hubs work as part of a national network to deliver our testing service and to deliver the content of the national genomic test directory. We have recently um, introduced seven genomic medicine service alliances, which help to underpin that, uh, that service where they provide the multidisciplinary clinical leadership um, that is required to actually embed genomic medicine across end-to-end -end pathways. So actually having some funded infrastructure to support that engagement with all of the different networks that will be involved across the whole country and also how that is underpinned by the work that we do with Health Education England and the Genomics Education Programme on workforce development um, and education across the system. Um, as I've mentioned, we work with a number of different partners, including with Genomics England, to, who deliver some key services as part of our whole genome sequencing service, and also support um, and uh, develop the UK genomic knowledge base. So there's a lot uh, going on in this uh, in this infrastructure um, that, that we bring together. Uh, next slide, please. One of our uh, first principles, and I think has been has been discussed, is really that patients are at the heart and involved in all of our decision making um, for the genomic medicine service. So we have uh, patient and public representatives on all of our national uh, governance bodies, including our program boards and um, program boards. And also within our uh, regional infrastructure in the Genomic Medicine Service Alliances, uh, patients are full members of all of the key governance groups. And we then bring them together as part of a uh, communities and patient forum nationally. So we can make sure that they are uh, have a forum to provide us with that strategic advice around how we develop our services, around ethical issues um, that we need to uh, that we need to address. Um, but also we make sure that we are engaging more widely with the public in commissioning decisions through consultations and engagement. Um, uh, and we would do this at any point in time where, where we have the, we are making policy decisions. Um, and we also work with partners, for example, BAME, children and young people communities, so that we can make sure that we are uh, getting a diverse range of views to inform our, our decision making going forward. We've also introduced a patient choice model uh, for, uh, initially for whole genome sequencing so that all patients are given a clear and informed choice about whether or not they um, have a whole genome sequencing test. They understand how the, um, the implications of the test and how their data will be used so that they can make an informed choice about, um, 
whether or not they move ahead. And as I've said, this is where we're pulling together that conversation about a, a clinical choice, but also then giving each patient an opportunity to participate in uh, research. But there is a clear and distinct choice that a patient does not have to be part of a research programme to receive uh, the, the clinical care. They're absolutely separate and therefore um, patients are able to make the decisions that, uh, that they would want to about their care. Next slide, please. So the Genomic Medicine Service covers a full breadth of genomic testing um, that's outlined in the National Genomic Test Directory from uh, targeted uh, testing through to um, panels. And we have uh, large pan cancer panels that have been developed um, and then moving through to exome sequencing and now with the introduction of whole genome sequencing as part of our NHS uh, routine clinical service. And that really then uh, has a deliberate focus on the whole continuum of genomic testing. We update the National Genomic Test Directory on an annual basis, and we've put in place a, um, a, a robust and scientific-based process uh, with the work and support of clinical and scientific experts through test evaluation working groups to support that process and so that we can keep up uh, with the pace and developments of, of change. Currently, we have um, uh, 357 uh, rare disease clinical indications in the test directory and 203 cancer indications. Uh, one of the things that we're also looking at is the potential for pharmacogenomic panels and polygenic risk scores and how that would be um, introduced as part of uh, an NHS clinical service. But really the, the key to the test directory is providing that clarity uh, for clinicians and for scientists around the, the testing that is commissioned by the NHS in England and that standardisation that the test directory outlines the, the clinical indication for which a, a test um, uh, can be performed, uh, the patients who are eligible, uh, the methodology by which that testing is performed, whether it is a panel or an exome or a whole genome sequence, um, so that there is that equity and standardisation across the country. We move to the next slide, please. Some key examples of developments that we've made through the test directory, particularly in the last year, has been the implementation of NTRAC gene fusion testing, which supports um, the use of some histology independent treatments for uh, people with cancer. Uh, we introduced, started to introduce that in April last year, and we've been ramping up capacity for that testing over the last couple of months so that um, around 30,000 patients per year um, would uh, need to access the NTRAC gene fusion testing, which is delivered by our genomic laboratory hubs. We've also uh, developed a, a DPYD service to uh, alert uh, clinicians to uh, potential fatal toxicities with the uh, fluoropyrimidine chemotherapy drugs. Um, and this has been done in line uh, with um, EMA recommendations and MHRA recommendations um, as well. And this is something that has been uh, now rapidly implemented in the, in the genomic laboratory hubs. And also many of the hubs are delivering it at this at rapid um, turnaround time. The DPYD testing is the start of how the uh, genomic medicine service will be moving into the provision of pharmacogenomic testing. And we've already seen how uh, the impact that, that this type of testing can have on patients who would have had a fatal outcome had this not been uh, produced. And now the fact that we have this standardization and access across the whole country um, is something that we're, that we're really proud to have been introduced. Next slide, please. And all of this is underpinning our move towards a more personalized medicine and medicines optimization approach and really looking at um, how novel treatments um, and how we can link the testing to ensuring that, um, uh, that the right patients get access to the right medicines at the right time. And we'll be looking to introduce more extensive pharmacogenomic analysis to really um, look to have through an integrated approach to bring genomics and medicines more closely together uh, to ensure that uh, that that's fully embedded as part of our testing service and also as part of the, the medicine and personalized medicine uh, agenda going forward. Next slide, please. I think I've just heard the bell. Um, 
one of the key areas we've also introduced is a, a national whole exome service uh, for NICU PICU patients and also fetal uh, patients. And really, this is helping uh, to support uh, uh, the uh, understanding of um, uh, and referrals for uh, uh, fetal exome and uh, NICU PICU patients. And we've had really good results so far with diagnostic rates across both services at around 40%. Um, if I just whiz through the last uh, couple of slides, so we've got, um, we've also, as I've started to mention, introduced our whole genome sequencing service into routine clinical care, and we're at the phase now where we are uh, in live clinical testing, where we've got a small number of patients for rare disease and cancer who are having their uh, whole genome sequence as part of our, our live service, and we are, have a systematic approach to how we have uh, gone live with assessments at each stage to make sure that we're building confidence in the system. And we have now had samples that have gone through the end-to-end -end process and we're starting to see the real value of whole genome sequencing um, over and above the, the standard of care that has previously been offered. We're looking uh, to ramp up that rollout over, uh, over uh, 2021. Um, and we are also collecting um, information and data as in terms of the uh, had the evidence for uh, further rollout of whole genome sequencing to other, um, other clinical services. We um, have also, as I've mentioned, introduced our seven genomic medicine service alliances. And if we flip to the next slide, um, they're responsible for uh, providing the underpinning clinical leadership across the genomic medicine service and really supporting us to uh, retain and, and um, build patient and public trust, strengthen partnerships across their geography, look at how they can embed clinical leadership and the multi-professional workforce through transformation programs across the whole geography, and importantly, to facilitate um, participation in research and innovation um, through the GMS infrastructure that we have put in place. Uh, next slide, please. And through this, we've been able to explore new and exciting opportunities, for example, looking at uh, long read sequencing and potential opportunities for functional genomics, We've implemented large next generation sequencing panels um, and high throughput technology across all of our genomic laboratory hubs. As I've mentioned, we've rolled out a number of new key uh, clinical services um, in the whole genome sequencing, uh, whole exome servicing uh, services. We're looking at uh, the next developments around polygenic risk scores and how that could help prevent uh, and predict disease. We're looking at the use of new technologies, for example, the LAMP technology for the potential use for pharmacogenomic testing. And we're also working with others uh, research in the more research space, for example, UK Biobank, on the outcomes from their sequencing and how that can help inform our clinical service going forward. Um, I've got about two more slides, if that's OK, sorry. Um, the next slide is around, this is really important, how we interface the clinical and research. And this is very much how we drive our partnership uh, with Genomics England to, and this is actually their infinity loop uh, here, to demonstrate how there is this interface between healthcare and research through this infinity loop and how we can use that to really drive benefits for patients and use the research insights to really drive improvements through clinical care. If we go to the next slide. And what we've done to support this is um, put in place our NHS uh, Genomic Medicine Service Research Collaborative, which brings together some of the key players across the genomics infrastructure to facilitate genomic research and clinical trials for maximum benefit um, for patients and the NHS. And through that group, uh, we will review uh, research proposals where either the um, access to uh, research samples or access to patients or access to some part of the NHS infrastructure can be facilitated through our genomic laboratory hubs and our GMS alliances to really help drive that genomic research. Um, and it's driven by key principles around potential for patient benefit, alignment to the strategic priorities for the NHS, um, the depositing of data into uh, the National uh, Research Library, so that then we can build that large data set, which helps us to also have that engagement with industry and academia and the NHS, where we know that when we bring all of that together, there is maximum benefits for patients and the NHS. And then my last slide is why we're doing this. 
and it's all to uh, lead to more equitable access and better outcomes for patients. We have a number of examples of how uh, what we are doing in, in genomic medicine is really making a difference to patients. And we hope by continuing to work and bring this all together from the clinical and research side, we can continue to do that um, uh, going forward as well. Mm -hmm.